You know, running the only Canadian late night talk show is no easy job. Not only do you have to figure out all the technical mumbo jumbo and all that nonsense, but also you have to keep the greatest band in Canadian late night history in line, the Nocturnal Emissions. You have to bring them in every week. You know how hard a task that is? It's not easy, especially when you have one guy who's a diva. We'll get to him later. But you think, Pete, what do you mean? They're made up with the Nocturnal Emissions is Steve, Wes, Mike, Dave. What are you talking about? Well, I'll tell you, Wes is so dedicated to our show, he tried to shoot himself in the knee with a nail gun to the, uh, this week just so he could get off work to be here. That's a dedication the man showed. Mike Bo, Mike Bo, he's married a nice Dutch woman. This guy realizes that he wants his, this Dutch woman is very Dutch. Dutch women like to have a lot of babies. They like to breed. He's going to marry this woman, and Mike doesn't like to breed as much as he likes to practice breeding. So he devised a diabolical scheme. He got uh, four of his sister's sick kids, and he's watching them tonight. That's going to keep her on the pill for the next three years. And then who? What about Dave Charters? You say, Dave, he wouldn't let you down. Dave is a fucking diva since day one, and everyone knows it. Diva Cup Dave. Yes. We had 100 listeners on the first episode. He became unbearable. <laughs> since we went to live video, he's become just, just awful. He's holding me over a barrel. Well, I tell you, I'm not going to stand for it. When a problem comes along, I must whip it. So I got the greatest r rendition of the nocturnal missions ever in history. I put them together to put heat on those motherfuckers to let them know that next week, you better fucking show up or these guys are here for good. But you know what else I did? I brought in a whole bunch of comics tonight. We're loaded, stuck to the gills with these guys, but there's only one way. There's only one way we can get this show started. How's that, Pete? Deep song, boy. Oh, fuck. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Live from the Dutch Hall, the greatest podcast to ever come out of the pool shed in Pine Grove, Ontario. But more importantly, we are Canada's only late night talk show. And with us tonight is the greatest band in Canadian late night history, bar none. Mike Bullock didn't have anybody. Frank D'Angelo didn't have anybody that could hold a candle to him. But we have the Nocturnal Emissions here tonight, comprised this week of Paul Etje on guitar and vocals, everyone. Hey. That was a nice applause. At home, they're applauding too, Paul. Beside him is the savior of the Nocturnal Emissions, the only one to show up tonight. The only one. And that's why he gets the title the savior. Steve the Reluctant German on lead guitar, everyone. And beside him, we have a new set of balls for the Nocturnal Emissions. We got, he's right back in the Dutch Hall, everybody. You might remember him playing with Zeffler on an older show. It's Brad Good, everybody. Woo! All right. That was him. And on drums, I call him the savior of our sound. He's the savior of sound. I, I don't even think Steve would, would disagree with me. He's been a great help to the show. He's on drums. I think the fourth show in a row. Kev Belanger is back. You know, our director no show tonight, so we had to put it on our guests tonight. Our guests that I'm so happy to have in the hall tonight. There's they're two newbies, two newbies, uh, two people having their Dutch Hall cherry popped. And by that, I mean Steve the Reluctant German will fuck you after the show. We have Mike Mitchells here and Michael Moses. And all the way, this guy's been here a couple times before. A long time ago, he was on a real old show of Life from the Dutch Hall. 
We're happy to have him back. We thought he was too big to be back. Jason Allen is here. Jason Allen. And the only guy left to introduce is the host of this show, two-time President's Club Award winner, Pete Van Dyke. Hey. <laughs> You guys must be tired. That's got to be hard, especially Kev. Huh? Yeah, it's quick, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. He Welcome, everyone, live from the Dutch Hall. We're back again. And as I said, we're with a decimated crew. Now, against, I didn't understand that my brother, Paul, our director, was going to be absent tonight. That is a real shocker to us. There was no word, nothing. He just didn't show up. So we got Moses helping us out. Moses is doing, a, Michael Moses is doing a great job. This guy could be doing anything. He could be, he could be behaving like a diva. The goddamn man opened for Robert Klein on New Year's, which is a real big deal in here. In Waterford, he got an audible gasp for it. An audible gasp he got. That's how big a deal it was. And he's, he's managed to, to do this for us, so thank you, Mike. But uh, I want to tell you, this is a big deal because it is February 1st, so uh, every time when the month changes in the Dutch Hall, we get to, and every man cave you have or any like anybody that's got some room that's strictly for a dude that his wife uh, doesn't like or whatever, or his girlfriend or whatever you're living with, uh, and you put up some sort of chichka, you know? That's what that's what my uncle calls it, chichka or something like that. You put up some like a... Yeah, some like uh, eye candy on the wall, you know. And in our case, we used to have a pinup girl calendar, and then it became a swimsuit calendar from Sports Illustrated. And it, we have spent a month with this lovely lady in January, yeah. oh. Barbara Palvin. Barbara Palvin. I had to look her up and uh, see if there's new pictures, and uh, there's a lot of fake ones, but I still used them. And uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so it is time now, Stephen. You're the only one that came here. I'm going to give you the honors. You can uh, unveil the new girl for February. Ooh, from from the black Hall. girl, I feel it. I feel you it. You think it's happening in February? Oh, Black yeah, History yeah, Month. Yeah, that, that's the only reason I'm feeling it. Room. It's really good. Our it's jam room has a calendar from yeah, 2011. Yeah, seriously, right? thank God, like, James. Oh, is not here. Black oh. man's kryptonite instead. Oh, yes, man. it's Black man's kryptonite, exactly. It is a blonde girl. You know how that pin works, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> you figured out the pin? Thank you, Stephen. What's her name? What's this uh, lovely girl's name? Samantha Hoops. Hoops. That's, that's not real. That, well, that's no there, way. That's that can't be a real last name. Though, that's right? the that's for the black guys. That's, that's Dutch, right? <laughs> Hoops. Yeah, it guys, must be. help me out here. She must be a Dutch girl. It's Dutch for anal. Yeah, <laughs> the Hooper. She uh, she does seem to be having trouble with her bikini bottoms, and even in the back picture, she seems to be itching to take those things off. I bet she's got some sort of. Uh, Rash or something, yeah. I probably Rats. need to get that off. Anyways, I hope she gets that figured out. I watched those be behind the scenes. She's probably very uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, I've spent too much time watching the behind the scenes of modeling, <laughs> but uh, she was probably cold right there. <laughs> probably windy as hell. Yeah, she didn't yeah. want to be there. No, I'm sitting didn't. close enough, and I can see the goosebumps. Can you, you can, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, you can see some. You know what? <laughs> we should do this segment because if we don't do it, we don't get like new people on these um, on the m media thing, and we don't do the hottest trends in a segment we call oh. a world trends. One, two, three, four. World trends. World trends. <laughs> <laughs> really, we hey. did that out for like yeah. ten minutes. That's all we did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We could have jammed. Before the show, it jammed up. forever. Yeah. I was just warming up. Anyways, we go, we do, we, we check in on what's going on. I look at uh, what the biggest trends are in the we world. We play it. You want to keep going? You no. still going on, Steve? We want to, want to give you some time? No. <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead. No. Nope. Nope. Um, we're good. If you, <laughs> but every week we do do this thing where we have to look at what the uh, world, what's going on in the world in, in world trends. trends. Yeah. And so this one, we got a Canadian one. Oh, we actually had a news story locally that made made uh, a Delhi news, which yep. is we don't often have Delhi news. Sounds like an oxymoron. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the last time we had local news that kind of hit it, like where it made the big papers, was uh, the guy got his uh, porn or no, a stripper pool stolen in Port Dover. Remember that? That's right. So this time we, and then there was a guy that got like a a deer head, uh, put on his. That was a, a deer head or something put. Uh, on his mailbox? Did you hear that one? I thought yeah. you guys yeah. used deer heads as stripper poles around here. <laughs> Are they the same thing? Well, I will, you, you got to use a whole animal, Jason. You got to use a whole animal. That's how we were raised. That's right. So, um, 
<laughs> we uh, and then this one. This one is actually also kind of ridiculously related. It, it was the uh, the fact that this man had a large quantity of porn stolen is why it made the news. It, because of all the things that were stolen from his house, he also had hats and tools stolen, <laughs> hats and tools. But the first thing on the list was his sizable amount of pornography was stolen from his house. And uh, this was, uh, I guess, people really feel for the guy because it made the 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 news. All, uh, the Toronto news especially, I guess. Yeah. So that, that, I don't know if that means it made the national news or not, but people care about this guy's porn. So if you hear anything about it, <laughs> and uh, you can help, I'm sure just give us an email at livefromthedutchlgmail.com. We'll do what, our, do so what we're we can. We're supposed to give donations? Like if you have extra porn? Playboys? Oh, maybe we, can, <laughs> maybe we can start a fund for this guy, yeah. Did he, uh, maybe we can just get him an internet account. That would be a lot yeah. cheaper. There's fiber in Delhi. Mm. You can get it the, all back. The fact that it was physical... Paper stolen implies that it was vintage porn too, right? I yeah, mean, it would have to be. So you think so? They don't make. Uh, yeah, exactly. Do they make new magazines anymore? Do you know? Some. No, man. Playboy, Playboy got rid does. of the nudes. Yeah, they're done all together, aren't they yeah. now? What is the point? Yeah. They for the articles. Back. The articles. No. That's the lie that everybody told. Nobody watched it for the art or read it for the articles. I looked at the pictures and the cartoons. I did look at the cartoons because they were kind of funny. Hustlers cartoons were really funny. I th- I yeah. thought. When is this? What? Oh, yeah, how old were you when you were looking at the cartoons? <laughs> like, the, when did you first find Playboy? In like, life? 12. 12, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then that's, you would go for the cartoons, too. Yeah, the cartoons were funny. Yeah. It was the all. Ca- they know 12 year olds are looking. That's why they yeah, put yeah. the cartoons in. That's what even someone yeah. said, like, my daughter from school, she yeah. said, uh, or she, my daughter's in high school, and she said that uh, um, uh, some kid in her school listened to one of my shows, yeah. and I was talking about masturbation. Right. Hey, AJ? Yeah. Like, yeah. He could relate. Really <laughs> for me. And then, uh, and then, uh, uh, and so I was like, at first thinking like, oh, I'm polluting these kids' minds. Right. But then I'm thinking like, uh, they're already f- fucked up. They you know? already, like they're they just finding it. me because they want that kind of stuff or whatever. You let him know there's other people in the world doing it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now he, he doesn't have to be embarrassed. Was, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You helped him. Yeah. Yeah. And I let him know that his dad probably does it too. <laughs> You're a support <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. system for this. Yeah. <laughs> probably. Great. Yeah. Yeah. You're pro- your dad's definitely doing it. Yeah. I don't know. It slows down as you get old uh, as much. Like, <laughs> Everything. Like, like you want to take your time with it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Probably. Yeah, you got to set aside time if you want to do it now, because it's like I'm gonna have to put like a fucking half hour in to find something that's gross enough to get me off. So now you, now we know what you do in this studio when we're not around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You take your time in here. Yeah. That's why there's not a black light in here. <laughs> no, I've never actually. But look, it's, I've never it's done perfect because look where his chair is, and then look where the girls are. <laughs> exactly straightforward. Yeah, you know, right. the, the, if everybody else is on the side, the girls are straight ahead. That's <laughs> what I like to uh, I like to <laughs> know my focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, I do and like the, the dog lady. buttholes yeah, over yeah, here yeah, behind the Steve. Dog yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on <a> le- <laughs> <laughs> Just in case, right. you know, somebody. That's Jesus, eh? That's got to get rid of, of the boner real quick. It's a straight shot to the left. You know. Boom. What is Jesus? Oh man, I see. You see Jesus on the dog with great big vagina lips. Yeah, that's his feet. Anyways, uh, the other the better big news was that they changed the words to O Canada. It finally went through. They changed the words to O Canada. Oh, good. So I wanted to know how many people would say with confidence that they know the words to O Canada. In French? No, English. You only know that middle part in French. I think you gotta yeah. start yeah, singing. Bra. Yeah. Yeah, you have to sing it. But if yeah, you, you ever asked just to say it, yeah, it's pretty hard, it right? It would be hard. O yeah. Canada. Home in native land. Yeah. Our home in native. True. Oh, I got it right here. The words. Yeah. Oh, you got it right there what on did the they internet. Change? Oh, on this piece of paper I printed out previously. How I just happened to have it. No, I planned this bit. That's why I did <laughs> research and printed it out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's silly me. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it, they changed the words. This is the words that I didn't even know existed. I thought it was true patriot. It, it's the true patriot love line. Do you know it? That's the one they changed. True patriot love, glorious and free. No. Nope. No. No. In all thine, in all thine, all thine sons sons command. They change it. It's now inclusive. All everybody's oh. command. Yeah. 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 Glorious yeah. Ones command? Now you yeah. got it. I didn't know. I I thought it was Whatever songs or something. Command. I thought it was all thy songs command. I didn't even all know it was. All thy sons command. It's sons. Yeah. It's yeah. all thy sons command. And they changed it to all of us. Oh. All of us command. But they had changed it once before. What did the original line even mean? Uh, no, but the English version is not the same as the French version. It's not a translated thing. 
it's like a bunch of other words. No, right? they if changed you, the English. It's not one. a direct. Yeah, it's, it's not a English. direct translation though. The French one's the real one. That was the first. The right? French one's the real one. I think the French one was written first. Oh really? I don't know nothing about it. I I would think that the. I'm pretty f- sure about that. Am I right? You want to Google it, Jane? Google if the French, Google. if the Canadian anthem was written in French. Could you Google first. that? Or f- yeah, first. Sorry. Try that out. We'll 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 check it. Pretty Anyways, who cares? You know the uh, that's the thing about this whole thing. I don't really give a okay, shit about. Move on to the next band. Yeah, we can say we did it now. But they took out sons and left native. Yeah, and they left. Isn't it Aboriginal now? Isn't that the term? Good point. Uh, they're saying it's our native land, as though we just were. We're, it was, we're, we're not. We're the not natives. born here. Yeah, we're not. Nobody. I was. Well, I guess we were born here. We're all born here. <laughs> yeah, but like but our ancestors were natives to this country. They're probably like. No. like yeah. I don't know. They should have. Cha- I think Texas. they should change the whole thing. The rodeo the song. Is oh, his own meaning it's too, forty right? low, and I don't give a fuck. Got a heater in my truck, and I'm off to the rodeo. Every Canadian loves that song. That's right. I've, I've never heard that song in my entire life. You never no. heard the rodeo song? No, please sing it though. Oh. You fucking jerk! Get on my nerves! Oh, here comes Johnny with his pecker <laughs> in his hand. He's a one ball man. He's off to the rodeo. Yeah, you know what? Eh? Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be a great national anthem. See before a hockey game. About how Johnny lost the one ball. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, ne- he yeah. never says. Yeah. Never That's Johnny McDonald, our <laughs> first <laughs> prime minister. He lost the ball. Night, yeah, one night Johnny. <laughs> oh yeah, we know. <laughs> great, great prime minister. Yeah. That's beautiful. Look on the ten. He's only got one nut. You can. <laughs> <laughs> if you zoom in, that's how they could tell if it's counterfeit or not. They're like, yeah. they left two. Yeah. It's bullshit. Idiot. Get it out of our store. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So that's it. The the uh, the main point of that, I think, the conservative bitched about it. They didn't want to change it, and it was mainly because we have women soldiers. I think it was because they're soldiers, and then uh, there was, and now this. We said the sons were our soldiers, and now it's sons and daughters, and it's like, oh, whatever, mm, fuck, too much. done. Sorry. Too hard to say. Uh, okay, so the next one is uh, Elon Musk. You know Elon Musk? Yeah. He sold a fuckload of uh, flamethrowers. Did you buy one? Mm. No, they were six hundred bucks. I think U.S. Fi- 500 right. US, it said. Oh, 500 US. Uh, that doesn't yeah. seem like a lot. For a flamethrower? I don't know. Yeah. It looked awesome. No. You can't yeah. buy a decent guitar well, for that. People are. Uh, yeah. What do people use it for? Like cleaning their driveway or something? Melting snow. I saw a guy doing that on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, with a flamethrower? Fucking A. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I would wait. <laughs> that would be the best way to. <laughs> Like, uh, but they don't. But it's weird, isn't it, that he sold five hundred or whatever five thousand flamethrowers? He, he had twenty thousand or ten thousand. Yeah, ten thousand because they need to be in ten million bucks or something. Or I don't know that he they earned from selling these flamethrowers. Full on Hank Scorpio from The Simpsons. Yeah. You know he's got nice. the big ass flamethrower. Wouldn't you? Yeah. It's like super villain shit. Yeah, exactly. He's he wants to like he gives colonize a, oh, Mars. Yeah. He's building flamethrowers. Like, what is he really up to? <laughs> He's fucking awesome. Yeah, I really like the guy yeah. uh, because because but it's weird. He he started selling hats, just like uh, and t- hats. And then the ha- if he sold enough hats, he would then sell flamethrowers. Then he sold flamethrowers, and then uh, uh, now he's sold them out. Now he has to start this boring machine. Uh, so he will be able to bore into the streets to make this loop. Yeah, the hyperloop. Yeah. Hyper hyper yeah, yeah. So it'll get you. He's, he's, uh, he says he's got like plans now to do it like from uh, New York, Philadelphia, uh, Washington, and like Boston. I think it goes all the way there. Yeah, Boston is yeah. like a loop, and you, you'd go into like a little pod, and then uh, and then your car would lower under the the uh, earth? the earth. <laughs> And then you would just like, I think you just like chill out because you're in your little pod and then you just zoom to the whatever location you get off at. You just like, wait, like it just moves your car. You're yeah. not driving it. You're not driving. It, no, it's not a car. It's like a little. You pod, put your man. you put your car yeah. in this like pod. thing. You're the Jetsons. Hot wheels at that point. You're just hot right. Yeah. yeah. You're just sitting there. <laughs> and it's just like, what is it? Magnets or something, no, it's right? It's a giant red. It's, it's a giant magnets. red bar that you pull back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a pinball machine. <laughs> exactly. Anyways, it's a, and he also says he's gonna bore use it to bore into Mars because in Mars they have to mine ice and all this stuff. So he he's gonna get there before like NASA, and he's oh, yeah. just like a regular dude, right? He's going to Mars wow. to shoot a giant laser at us. <laughs> oh yeah? yeah. You think that's what's gonna happen? Do- if you look at that dude, he could he's that guy. Have you he's seen peel his mom? off the face? I'm a Martian. Have you seen what his <laughs> mom looks get. like? I swear to God, you gotta Google his mom. His mom looks like a super villain. His mom, his mom looks evil. Mom, she's like, and she's yeah. probably the leader of it all. Yeah, you know, for sure that's every is. super villain 
something, you know? Trying to make up for their mom. <laughs> <laughs> I want to impress my mom. Like I don't know, but is there any other visionaries in the world other than Elon Musk right now? Donald Trump. I guess you don't have. Have you been paying attention? I guess you don't have to have a good vision anymore. It's just no, a, it's to be a visionary. Very, the blurred vision. <laughs> yeah. The very blurred vision. That's I think like we've gone to that point where like we find one like Elon and we're like, ah, right, let him just do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, other people are like that. Yeah, the government's been yeah. trying shit, and yeah, I'd rather right. just see some dude do it. Yeah, let's just let Elon do it. Last thing we have to talk about is uh, you ever heard of a uh, 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 emotional support animals? You know, emotional support animals? Like pets? Like, like when dog. you're dying yeah. and they bring in a cat and you pet it and you don't mm-hmm. think about dying for a bit? I think that you yeah. could do it for that. But I think what people are using it for <laughs> is just to help them with their anxiety. So if they are traveling or something like that and they have anxiety about flying, they can get a note from their doctor to say they can bring their dog on the flight. Right. This is where it's mostly... Sorry, Lori. This is where it's mostly becoming an issue. And... uh there was this one person on United Airline that decided that they needed to bring their support animal on the plane, and their support animal happened to be a peacock. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, had a note from the doctor and everything saying that they're going to put a peacock, uh, they want to put a peacock uh, on the plane so that they can feel comfortable, right? So I, I believe these animals have to be trained or whatever too, but like a fucking peacock, right? At what point in time? How do you train a peacock? <laughs> train a peacock? Also, yeah, exactly. Like, how fucked up must the bird feel going into a machine <laughs> that flies for it? Yeah. <laughs> like the bird's like, I got it pretty easy, man. It's fucking, this is what I was meant to do, and I don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what emotional support yeah. do you get from a bird, too? Like, what emotional support can you get from a bird? Like a um, what? Like uh, I don't even understand. Don't Maybe know. she has to make it like. Oh, when the feather color. comes yeah, out yeah, of the yeah, butt yeah. at the. She, she's got to see the colors. I should have left it at Jason's joke. <laughs> 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 Anyways, that's it for that shit. Don't you think? <laughs> that's it for that shit. That's the best way to end a segment. Shit we have to do. Yeah, that's shit we have to do. We should change the name of that segment to shit we have to do. That's the end of that shit. Shit we have to do. That's right. But there is one more thing we need to do. What? Before we get to our wonderful guest that I'm eager to talk to, and that's do a segment we call Feedback. Oh, my God. We got feedback. <laughs> one, two, three, four. <laughs> we got feedback. It's feedback. Before we go to the end. Motherfucking feedback. Well, welcome to Feedback. We got feedback. As always, our feedback is brought to you by our friends at Amazon. If you'd like to go and uh, I got a question. If you have a business, this is for the business owners out there, and you want to just say, you know, you, you buy office supplies or whatever, tell your employees to go to the Live from the Dutch Hall website and then click on our Amazon banner and then do your shopping for your office. And then guess what? Uh, you get a good deal on product and some of that money will come back and help us here make a better show. All yeah. the proceeds that we get from Amazon do get sunk back into the show, so thank you for everyone that's done that. You know what else? We have to thank our friends at NORPAC. The meat people. <laughs> the beef people. The <laughs> meat people. Yeah, it's not the same. It's a, it's a line they've paid us. Look, their their name is right on the show right there. It's actually the beef people? The beef people. Okay. The NORPAC. Beef people. The beef people. The beef people. <laughs> this is why we need Paul. Paul thinks he's not uh, not needed. But you guys are fucking it up big Just time. <laughs> it's not even close. That wasn't my line, for the record. This is the shortest commercial ever, too. I'm just supposed to say Norpac. The meat people. The beef people. Three the words. People. <laughs> see, Paul, Paul, I hope Paul listens to this so he can see how valuable he is. Right. You beef. like beef, then you will love Norpac. The, the beef people. people. <laughs> you still said meat. I, I didn't said say it at all. No? I didn't say oh. any. I went beef. Okay, good. I was beefing out. Thank you. I think we nailed the last one. That's it. And, uh, you know, Van Dyke Party Services, this this is a... I'm going to throw this out to the comedy community out there. I know there's a lot of comedy shows people put on. And you know what? I don't think you're investing enough to make a good show. What you should do, if you're if you're having problems filling a room, if, if, if the idea of you throwing a comedy show is to have a good time and make sure everybody else is having a good time in that room, 
then one thing you can do is invest $100 of cold, hard cash in Van Dyke Party Services. And we will send you between five and 29 Van Dyke First Cousins in bright yellow jackets. And I guarantee you, you are going to have the time of your life. And again, all it's going to cost you is that $100 of cold, hard cash and all of our expenses, which will be dear. But if you're not 100% satisfied, we will uh, return that $100. But those expenses have run through our bodies and potentially yours. Van Dyke Party Services. Don't live your life in regret. Brought to you by Clean Flow. Amazing. And I should say. I want one of the cups. <laughs> yeah. There's a bunch of them back here. Yeah, <laughs> brought to you by Clean Flow. Clean Flow made those cums, cuffs for us. Yes, They're big Van Dyke Party so. Services uh, uh, supporters, you know. They've really That's pushed amazing. us. They're the ones that bought the jackets as well. But I got to tell you, for the comics on that show, if you do decide to employ our services, you will not be happy to work that show. Because uh, <laughs> unless you enjoy while you're performing to see my cousin Ben, just like. Uh, in the middle of the room, swinging his dick and just slurring in some incoherent speech that only like a Norfolk is, drunk could understand. How is his dick, though? Oh, it's a nice dick. Well, then beer can thickness. I think that's yeah. challenge accepted. Yeah. Be funnier than that dick. Oh, yeah, it's uh, funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it his is one. Is, is, if his dick's funny, I gotta be funnier than that dick. Yeah. Challenge accepted. That's <laughs> great. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> oh, one more, one more uh, ad, and that's a uh, Yarmy Electric. Uh, you know, I. Uh, I don't know. I got a um, a message from my cousin Derek, and he says uh, he doesn't think the ads are working. He says that the ads are pro that we've been doing probably, I don't know if he wants to continue it because uh, uh, he's still busy. And uh, the whole point of this ad campaign was to uh, tell you fucking people that listen to this show that my cousin Derek is running a business, but he's busy. He doesn't need your bullshit. And honestly, what you should do is like uh, just fucking stop. Figure it out yourself. Go to a YouTube video. I don't know. Just put some tape on it. <laughs> Whatever you need to do. But leave my cousin Derek alone. He's busy. He likes to have children. He likes to plant deep. And he likes to raise <laughs> kids. And he likes to uh, <laughs> drink beer. What he doesn't want to do is uh, handle your flickering lights or whatever uh, dangerous uh, electrical situation you're dealing with. Uh, Yarmy Electric, if we don't get it right the first time, we'll get it right the second time. And if we don't get it right the second time... Well, you can go fuck yourself. Yes, thank you. That's it for ads. And uh, uh, so feedback. We went to... Uh, <laughs> we, we went... Uh, uh, a lot of people uh, were really interested in last week's show. It, it, th there was really... Uh, I think the ending was what most people keyed in on, the ending of the show that we had with Tyler Shazman last week. Yes. And... Um, <laughs> but we got lots of feedback about it. And uh, this first piece comes from YouTube. Bailey Akak, super fan of our show, uh, she says, great call in switching who the mayor of Pine Grove is. I don't think any of us could handle the title, and that she's referring to the Adcocks. I said that uh, Greg Bowe is our new mayor. Uh, that's what I, who I would vote for. And I said, love how packed the Dutch Hall was for the show. Hope you've all recouped from the surprise ending last show. I can't stop watching the last two minutes. Uh, so thank you, Bailey. We also got uh, Joe. You're... You know Joe? Yeah, my buddy Joe. Steve's buddy Joe. That's right. He says, I've had fun listening. It's been nice uh, because I've been using the time as my working on the kitchen time. Now I can listen on YouTube or Facebook. It's been easy. Better than the radio, that's for sure. And uh, have her back for a post-puke wrap-up is what, good call. what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I, I think that's two that referred to the ending of our show. And it, for those that haven't listened to last week's show or, or watched it, it's really worth a watch. It sure is. Uh, at the very end. <laughs> that's where the real highlight happens. <laughs> and if you watch, uh, like, uh, poor Shazma is uh, unaware of the whole event happening right. around him and underneath him. <laughs> I can't believe he missed it. And my brother is, uh, is trying to – he's in Mike's uh, position there in the corner – which is why we had to move him over there because he says he's, he's never going to be trapped in that corner again, <laughs> uh, for, because uh, the person in Jason's position had a little had a little uh, mishap where she uh, uh, puked on her show, <laughs> and then uh, that was gross. and uh, um, uh, that's the second time it's happened in Dutch Hall history. We've had two people puke on the show. Was the other one Jay? Uh, no, <laughs> no. 
Uh, the other one was uh, also a woman, mm -hmm. and uh, it was spaghetti puke. It was the whiskey oh, drinking yum. contest. Too. Yes, oh. yes, yeah, it was a whiskey drinking contest, and then she puked spaghetti. And even there was a noodle coming out of her nose, I remember. Oh! oh. Yes. So I think that one wins. Uh, but anyway, it's worth a checkout. Go to the end. It's funny as hell. Uh, Melissa... <laughs> Melissa Tiller on Facebook says, regarding the cuckolding clip, all of these new uh, terms for everything, uh, isn't, isn't that what swingers do? So I wanted to ask the comics here about this. Uh, you guys are younger and more wor worldly. You've been around the block a few times. Sure. Cuckolding. Cuckolding. How familiar are, with, are you with it? Oh, not yeah. us. We're happily... We know what it is, though. Yeah. You know what it yeah, is. We don't know what it is. We don't know what it is. Yeah, it's like a... Do I so know a cuckold myself? Can no. you say... <laughs> not, he's not outwardly a cuckold if I do know him. <laughs> well, yeah. Can a, can a girl be a cuckold? Can a, yeah. yeah. If the, if yes, there is. There is. It's called something else, but there is, like, a version where the girl... Where, uh, where the girl, like, watches her guy, like, bang another lady. Mm-hmm. That's the same thing, right? Like it's now, is that you, what swingers it, do, or don't they swap? Yeah, I think that's Swing, a distinction yeah. between swingers. cuckolding and swingers. Right? Yeah, is like that you, swingers would uh, you switch it up? They yeah, they're, they're both they're both doing it. Where a cuckold doesn't yeah. get laid, right? The Just cuckold watches. Watches. <laughs> that's even weirder, right? That's I thought so it was when you wear a costume of like a. Of no, a, of a, of a cartoon cosplay. you like. That's like oh, that's, that's like cosplay. no, no, no. Those are, are furries. Those are furries. Those, those furries. Yeah, furries. Yeah. But that's yeah. not even like a costume of they, furries. Like make their own. I knew thing. a couple furries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know Jonathan James, right? Yeah. Jonathan James was a furry. Jesus. Really? He's oh, a dude. He used to get <laughs> fucking like Jody. Remember Jody? Yeah. Matt Gerard's sister. Okay. okay. <laughs> you get her to dress up as like fucking Pikachu or like a fox and shit like that. Oh. And then he'd talk about it on stage, and the fucking, it's like another comic sister, and this other comic, everybody fucking hated him anyways, he's a fucking adult. <laughs> <laughs> but he'd be fuming, he'd be fuming. Jonathan used to have a bit about tit fucking Jody, <laughs> and then fucking Gerard would just be steaming, because like, everybody, <laughs> I had a joke, a roast battle joke about Matt Gerard one time, because he had a weird relationship with his sister. And she slept with a bunch of comics. I don't know why I'm saying this shit, but fuck them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She slept with a bunch of comics. And I said, Matt Gerard, every comic in London has done the one thing you'll never be able to do. <laughs> fuck your sister. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's great. That's like gold, man. You get a present from a guy like that? Where it's oh, dude, it was beautiful. <laughs> oh, it yeah. was the best. But yeah, he, would, he loved it. The furry shit. Yeah. He get into it like all the time. He talk about it on stage. I, I thought you knew that about little JJ. No, I actually yeah, I've Jonathan never seen James. his act. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I've never seen his act. Loved it, man. That yeah. was the whole act. Yeah, that was, was it? a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, he had a good chunk on it. Anyways, I'm not gonna say it was his whole act by yeah. any means. He's yeah, but he had a good chunk of it. Well, I would too if I was into it because that's what kind of is the, what makes you unique, right? You yeah. But, your truth. but how do you get into that? Like, what what goes so I was gonna say so wrong in your life. They're like, I'm gonna start wearing fucking costumes. I think you're just into it. Like you're just into feet. You know. <laughs> I think. Yeah, yeah. You're, like, you're born like, that way. Me, you're born like, that way. Not like you just. I, I was at the beach. This girl. Somebody took off the sandals. Feet. You know? Yeah, but so I was watching <laughs> Pikachu. I was like, I want to be Asher right now. <laughs> Furries. I guess right because like even <laughs> anime <laughs> porn. I don't yeah. see like what would be, you know, attractive about that. No. But at the same time, when I was like, eight. I, I was like, Ariel's hot, yeah, but I was yeah. eight. You know what I mean? So I didn't grow up and still, like, think about the little mermaid and fucking... Trump. I got a brother-in-law. You know, snap it off. I got a, I got a brother-in-law. He's a big fisherman. <laughs> and uh, oh. and uh, he loves... Gets girls to dress up. No, he's a, he, I went to Disney <laughs> World with him with our kids, right? And we're in the Ariel thing. And he was like... He, his daughter, he's, like, he's only got... He's got two boys and a girl. His daughter, he's kept pushing her. We got to go. See, you want to see Ariel, right? You want to see Ariel, right? <laughs> and then uh, I'm like, uh, geez, man, I don't think she wants to see Ariel. She thinks she wants to ride the rides there or whatever. No, no, we're going to stay in line and see Ariel. And then we're at the the one play, the Little Mermaid play, where Ariel's in the he's in the like shell or whatever singing. And then uh, this guy's sitting next to me. And he turns over to me and says, isn't, isn't Ariel hot? She's the hottest princess, right? Like, he says this to me. 
And then uh, she doesn't even have a vagina. It's like it's fins fish. and shit. Yeah. It's a cloaca. It's a cloaca for sure. And that's what I think is with this well, guy. I think he wants legs, to fuck I a fish. Think she gets the vagina. When she does get the I legs, guess, yeah, she gets the vagina. Included. Yeah, that's she true. Because there's no way Eric's stuck in her. Yeah. Face. No voice. You know <laughs> no what? Vagina, get out, get out of here. Yeah, that that should be the mo- <laughs> That should be the song she sings, not about her legs, yeah, but yeah. about the new yeah. vagina she got. You know. Uh huh. Used to have a little fish hole. Now I got this big floppy cunt, and it's awesome. Uh, That's gonna be in See, the next you Disney movie. <laughs> you don't need Paul here. You say cunt on your own. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's the name of this episode. Big floppy cunt. Is that what we have to write down? I didn't write it down. <laughs> no, I don't know. I can get away with that one on iTunes. Um, it's what asterisks are for. Yeah, big floppy Ariel. Maybe we'll call it. <laughs> uh, what was it? Okay, uh, yeah, anyways, my brother-in-law wants to fuck a fish. That's where we were. Um, <laughs> There's the title. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Melissa uh, Tiller, I'm going to tell you because you've been supporting our show for a long time, and I think this is the first time we put feedback from you on air. You, Melissa, you're the listener of the week. You play it, can't you? Right. You're the listener of the week. This is your week. Yeah, sorry, we didn't do that one. This is your no, we didn't practice that one. And we also don't have a rhyme for the Haitian dwarf, so I have to do it real quick. So it's going to suck. Uh, there's only one last piece of feedback. Or some, <laughs> thanks, Steve. To get to, it's from our good friend on iTunes, the Haitian dwarf. Juicy tits will give me fits. Hey, that's great. Hasten <laughs> <laughs> Dwarf, he gives us feedback each and every week. And uh, this week's no exception. He goes on iTunes and he says, five stars, what a band. He says, uh, this show that's was five. so star-studded and entertaining. This is referring to last week. He hasn't even seen this week yet. Tyler guys, Shazma. So. Well, this week hasn't stars. even happened yet. Yeah, completely. this week hasn't yeah, really happened. He goes, uh, this, this, this show was so star-studded and entertaining I almost puked. <laughs> HD. I think that's a great compliment, that's actually. Great one. Yeah. So now that's it. We've done feedback. If you'd like to, if you'd like to give us feedback, uh, go on live. Go to live from the Dutch Hall at gmail.com. Send us an email, or you can go to Facebook. We're live from the Dutch Hall there. You can go uh, subscribe on YouTube, li- or YouTube, and you get all our videos and live feeds and stuff. And uh, you can also go on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, fuck whatever else they make up. I'll be on that, too. <laughs> Sell myself like a whore to everybody. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you can find me there. So do that. And thank you to everyone that does that. Uh, tell a friend, too. Share a fucking episode or something. Okay. Um, our guest tonight, I'm really happy to have him, have him in here. We just came back from a show. And Willie Van Dyke, my father, says we don't ever talk about the shows we just came from enough. When we do these shows where we just came from a show. And uh, so, what do you want to say about tonight's show? Just to start <laughs> off, a community chat about tonight's show. What do you think? It, it was a show. It was a show, yeah. Yeah. It well, was like. Well, we got to set up the show because the show is what. They, this is the third show they had. Yeah, third show, the, yeah. The two shows before that, you were at their second one, right? First one. First one. And that yeah. was amazing. Yeah, it was sold I, out. Yeah, great. I, yeah. That's what I heard, and you guys were there, right? The band was yeah, there. yeah, and big. And then the second one I heard was great. Did pretty good, yeah. So now we're going there. We're excited, you know. Yeah, yeah. We're in the car <laughs> driving from Hamilton. You're even going. Yeah, yeah. From here, you know, everybody's going and excited for the show. And you get there, and Pete walks out immediately. There's nobody here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a there were people there. There were people there, there but, like but no comparative. But yeah, comparative. comparative. That, comparative. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. That's why you were like, I w- it was just disappointing because just I wanted. It was from like what we heard. Yeah. About the show. That room was super time. hot before, yeah. and the he, crowd was nice, and, and they were nice, but they but. Uh, well, uh, it was two work, people though. walked. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, two people walked. I wonder. I wonder why. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's talking about their dick. It's the same masturbation jokes. No <laughs> offense, Pete. Not talking, not talking about your jokes. You, well, at you the same great. time, your jokes too, Pete. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? No, mine didn't help. Like, <laughs> uh, like the guy who walked the guy or walked well, him was well, felt, felt like, bad. Yeah. Felt bad like it was his fault. And I no, said, no, it's no, not it's your fault. Bad. It's like the three of us that went before his uh, fault. It was. Me. It was his fault. All his fault? I would. He's well, it was two in, two in a row. Okay, because name him. 
<laughs> you know, I want names. Everyone's getting called out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll name them. No, I don't know. Who, 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 who they leave jo- after? Jonathan Just James would talk about his furriness on that stage. That was on stage so stuff, yeah. 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 Um, I made a joke to the comic who walked the two people. Who walked? <laughs> it was Dan yeah. Salino. Thank you. And Dan Salino notoriously walks people. Yes, that's I don't true. think he's a bad comic, but I, he does have, like, filthier material. So yeah. he walks a lot of people. And I made a joke before. I was like, try not to walk the whole fucking show before I go on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A small crowd tonight. And then when he got off, he's like, look, I only walked two people. I'm like, that's pretty good for you. <laughs> so, Wasn't that 20% I though? That, Didn't that, I, that, that was, was about 10 20%. People yeah. okay. It was a... Uh, I think so, and I think that he asked me actually if he thought his stuff was too harsh, and I'm like, I don't know if it was the stuff. Like, I really don't know. If it was, I don't know what to say. Like, he I don't know if it's the stuff. He didn't have filthy stuff. He had a joke about working in retail. Yeah, that's not well, it's filthy. Just new comic trying to tell that kind of joke is it's just not gonna go where he's, he's got no confidence behind it. He's not. It's not true. To him. Yeah, it's just and he was just uncomfortable. And he's a new comic. Yeah, yeah. And that room just didn't have energy. You have to bring it. Like, those comics that went up all before ask for energy. You have to bring the energy yeah, to yeah. them. Yeah. You can't, nope. you know. That was the thing, right? It was like, the, I for felt me, like, like, I had, like, yeah, or, yeah. And, and Jason, like, we brought, the, and even Mike fought, you know, and he's, he came off and he's like, that was work, but he fought and he, you know, got laughs and I had to fight and I got it, but I did get them. Yeah, yeah. But it, and like fun, but I had to bring them the energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they weren't going to give it to me. It's just one of those audiences where if you stayed with the bits and just kept, yeah, committing to it and just wrote out like whatever bar noise might be going on because it is a tighter area and you could hear some of that. But if you stayed with it rather than have the first part kind of flop and then be like, oh, that sucked. Yeah. You know, and then just kind of half-ass the rest. If you just stuck with it, mm. they were good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when I started my story about like shitting behind that tree, they, it yeah. was like a slow start, and I just stuck with it, and yeah. it was Committed popping. It, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. it was like, and that's just one of the things. It's like Michael said, like you learn that more and more over time that yeah. you're like. I believe in this, so now it's my job to convince you to believe in yeah, it. Yeah. So Anything I'll about the show, it's it. the difference between you know newer comics and more seasoned comics. Yeah, not yeah. Like, I'm not saying we're like seasoned, seasoned No, but, but this we is have the more thing. experience. No, this no. is the thing, too, though. If you start a story, if any of us start a story and it's not going well at the start, the fo- nobody here is going to be like, ah, oh, this sucks, never mind, and bail on it. You can't do that. No. Never do that. And it's like it's too much where like you start talking about your dick and you're like, oh, you guys aren't into this. Like, yeah, of course they're not into it. You just told them they weren't into it. Yeah. yeah. Just fucking ride it out. Just <laughs> stay in and it. The, but it's talking about my Be dick. That it's dick. talking about my dick. Like, I fuck girls and none of them. Oh, from yeah. up there like I fuck and like you don't <laughs> you don't fuck <laughs> girls. Don't, don't, don't talk girl. about your dick like you fuck yeah, like that's he's, what they he's were had a about he's had dick. a girlfriend for like yeah, yeah, thirty yeah, years just, though. It's like it's all those comics talking about their like dicks like they are like are just killers with women and oh, stuff. Yeah. You like can't not, yeah you like can't, that's not true. The thing. You gotta you gotta like work with what you got right. Exactly. So you can't you can't be like. This like kind of like nerdy like four hundred pound dude and be like, now I'm gonna talk about all the bitches I've fucked today. I'm gonna teach everybody in this. I'm gonna teach everybody in this room how to about s- squirters. He's how to even, smash and puss. And he didn't even and, like, say I'm gonna teach the I men this, how to uh, squirt. He he was so arrogant. And he goes, I'm gonna teach the women. No, how I to did squirt. that fucking joke. No, did you? Yeah, the squirting yes, joke. You. <laughs> Yeah, I did the squirting joke. No, I, I swear, Brett. <laughs> no, he I swear, it. Brett did no. it. Brett, I, you have a joke about squirting. You do have a Brett, Brett had a joke about like I'm gonna show you how to yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was okay. it after I did mine? Yeah, two. Maybe. Probably. Oh, he's that's following probably, up. He probably was sitting back there and it went in his head, and that's what he was talking about then. No, he, he I did. Swear I it was did do that. It, it was, it was like the same thing with the masturbation thing. Same fucking thing with the masturbation thing. So yeah, it was it was it, followed up. Uh, I just like using, the, like, using it was, the shower it was, head. It was yeah. a fine. It was a fine show, but it wasn't what we were like, expecting. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm getting it. Guy. I'm gonna have to go fine. talk with that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, he's listening. Well, I hope so. I, mean, I don't understand. It's like too, like if you're building off. Like it's one thing if someone does a joke and then you go up afterwards and do Similarly build off yeah. the joke. Yeah. Like if you're just like that's doing a tag to that joke. Sure, that's one. But that's like I don't know. Because it's like, you can do what, if you already have a joke, Yeah. do the joke. Like, if you go up and you do stuff about, like, being in, like, a very long-term, serious relationship, 
I'll still do my long term relationship stuff about Katie and I. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because it's like with different takes. I, it's different takes. It's still different, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's like we can have the same premise, and I'll still go along with it because, like, I believe in my punchlines and right. the fact that you had a joke on the same premise doesn't scare me to do my joke, right? No. So there's nothing wrong with that. But it is, like, a little sketchy when it's like, oh, I, I've been doing a bit about, you know, fucking whatever, about, like, shaving my pubes yeah, yeah. for a while, and then suddenly you meet a new comic, and then suddenly he's got all the, like, three minutes on shaving his pubes. Yeah, yeah. That's, like, a little strange. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And, uh, and, like, some comic, when you do that, you, like, you'll be up there and you'll be like, so Pete was talking about long-term relationships. I'm also, you know, do that, like, acknowledge that the other comic was talking <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. This That's is just, like, thing. a thing. That's just, like, a, yeah, yeah, a yeah. thing that you like. No, he's right. Every time, every single time I'm on a show with Doug Koning <laughs> and I do a joke about being mistaken for a lesbian at a doe and doe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I get it. I know what I look like. I know. But every time I do that joke with Doug, Doug comes on stage. He goes, uh, hey, what's up? Uh, you guys might recognize me. I'm the lesbian that hit on Mike at that doe and doe. Every single time. Because Doug looks like a fat lesbian. He does, too. Like a baby lesbian. Oh, yeah. Like a big, fat baby lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's nothing wrong with that, That's right? Good. There's nothing wrong with that because it's just alluding to the bit that already happened. Yeah, yeah. That got a pop and it's like, okay, cool. I can build on that. Manolis is like, does it almost every time yeah. where he'll pick out a joke for the, uh, the comic before him. And he'll just do something, a just kind of like, just a little callback to like it. James McVicker has a joke. Somebody stole stuff from my car. James yeah. McVicker does not have a joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chat. Sure. Uh, We're going to have no friends then, by the end of this podcast. Yeah, yeah I know. Well, Let's keep it going. I, this is awesome. Naming them. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm I'll name everybody. Name I don't give a shit. Yeah, we're naming them. Yeah, but, but yeah, the difference is Manolis doesn't then incorporate it into he, his he act. Goes, he goes, no, you know, no. James he like I lost, off the, I lost the, the bong, and then Manolis goes, I got a good bong today, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, I, I, I sometimes oh. think that people kind of latch on because they don't have their set worked out in their head because they don't have any jokes that they really believe in themselves. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they, do, oh, yeah. then they. Uh, oh yeah. Then they just like are kind of like uh, going up there and kind of half-ass riffing, you no, know. You, or you could see that dungeons. tonight. You could see like a few comics. It's like a lot of humming and hawing. Like, oh, what do I want to talk about mm -hmm. next? Yeah. It's like, well, you should have figured that out before you got up here. Yeah, yeah. kind of thing. Like, you kind of need a plan. You can switch directions sometimes if like an audience isn't feeling something. You can like switch up the set in your head, but you better do it fucking fast. Like, don't be up there like, uh, um, well, I don't know what I want to. What do you guys want to talk about? I just started doing this. I started doing this where I will go up with um, a bunch of pass I can take. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I used to go up with my one set list, and I'd be like, I'm going to run through this set list and do it top to bottom. And now I'm like, I got this path, and then this path, and then this path, depending on what happens in my set. You know what I mean? And then I can go either way, depending on like, if the crowd's older or younger or like liking certain jokes over certain other ones. Reading the crowd. This but yeah, like this, I, 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 when I started, I was... Amateurs from professionals or people. Yeah. It's just that's what, that's what shapes stuff. it. You watch someone like uh, Cliff. Cliff Myers is awesome for it, where he'll talk to audiences and he knows where he wants to get them. So he's got stuff. He's got a path set out in his mind already where he's got a couple jokes that like he really wants to hit that he know will pop and it might take him 10 minutes of crowd work to get there but he knows where he's going with it right right and that but because he's confident in what he's doing um yeah. it's yeah like like i you think guys the dream saying, is to have a bunch of tools in your tool box and your tool is. belt and then uh just be able to like what like throw them out no matter what happens you oh, can really act to it for sure and quick that's a huge like part drop, of it like yeah not yeah, yeah you what, can bust what it next up it's not real none quick, of that. no right? ums no ahs in your yeah, yeah. Just no what's next just quick like i was just did a show with manolis on tuesday and he did this awesome bit of crowd work where um and he's so good at getting the crowd like to feel like they're all buddies with him like he i don't know he gets to know their names and stuff like he really does a good job of that stuff eh? and uh manolis is up there and he uh, comes upon a gay guy, and he does this uh, bit, and it's, like, uh, awesome. And it comes across right off the cuff and all that stuff. Uh, and then he, uh, it's breaking up his story, though, and then he goes back into his story and finishes it. And it's the masterful. It's beautiful, right? I really enjoyed it. And then uh, 
uh, I say to him afterwards, you know, like uh, that bit was that like a, a a real bit that you worked into? Because how did you find the gay guy? Like, like was that guy really? Did he say he was gay, or did you just pretend he said he was gay, or whatever? And he goes, no, he's gay, but like, uh, I never. Uh, I just thought I would like to do that bit someday, but I never could figure out how to do it. And but then when that guy said he was gay, then it worked out that I did the bit and it worked. And it seemed so natural. It and it seems so just natural. Like it just seems yeah, off the cuff. Yeah. And now there is great like crowd work that is just off the cuff, like you hit something in the moment. Yeah, yeah. And it's perfect. But there is just like years of writing and writing every day and yeah. writing. And that that's when, crowd work. And then when you're talking to somebody and they're like, oh, I'm from here, or I do this. You're like, I already have shit on that. I'm going to bust that out right now and yeah, look yeah. like a fucking genius. Yeah, yeah. Because really, it's just years of writing, and you had it all stored away, and then one day you need it, right? Yeah, that's it's right. Perfect. Yeah, that's exactly it. Because he says, I don't know how to make a bit out of that. And I said, don't make a bit of it. Just keep it in your back pocket every time you meet just a gay guy. It. You never You're just going to, right? It you know. will, yeah, it will happen again. Yeah. Do you know put what I mean? Because that. Pocket every time you meet a gay guy. Yeah, because this guy, <laughs> it was a great bit, man. He shouldn't, like, lose it. I hope he keeps it going. It's so I was funny. In, like, Thunder, like, I'm diabetic and I got a bunch of material on my diabetes. And when I was doing shows in Thunder Bay <laughs> over New Year's <laughs> Eve weekend, there's a lady in the audience who is diabetic. So I'm like, this is perfect. Because I'll ask her a bunch of questions. <laughs> I already kind of know what it's going to be about. It's easy to jump into bits. The whole thing was, like, great. She, like, fucking just, like, and yeah, it just Yeah, because it was so conversational, like it, yeah, right? Yeah, it's so conversational. It didn't feel like bits to the audience. It felt like I was just making jokes about what she was saying about her diabetes. Yeah. But it's really a lot of the same stuff I have with my diabetes. So it just looks so natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that moment, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do. A I, I like to do some of that with the beginning of your joke. If you can ask the crowd a question, because then I know that depending on what they answer, I can go three ways yeah. with my joke. Yeah, you know, that's or how whatever. I started doing crowd work, was as every joke, I start with a question, sure. and yeah, yeah. they'd answer, and that's how I started doing crowd work. That's lead them into it, it a little bit, yeah. right? Yeah. That happened to me, like... And just connect with the audience. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That Sometimes I'll look like in the room, and I'll... Oh, I'm sorry, Jason, oh, you no, go. go. I was just going to say, I have that joke about couples who play the numbers games, like ask how many people they've had sex with before. Yeah. So I'm doing this show on Petawawa, and I ask the couple, I go, you ever play the numbers game where you ask who's, like, had sex with more people or whatever else? And the lady, like, like just deadpan was like, it's not a game. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck does that mean, lady? And I was like, what, 52 to 5? That's not a game. That's an annihilation. <laughs> and they're losing it, right? It's like, so, like, sometimes you find, like, just, like, weird little gems my bit didn't even really have to do with that. It was relating it to, like, you know, you don't ask that about other natural things, right? Like, yeah. you've heard the bit. Yeah, 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 I know the bit. I'm not going to do the bit. That's yeah. like... <laughs> if you did but the bit on my show, you have to disguise it like it's conversational, and then you look right. like a you genius on my show, right? Then, then you're brilliant, yeah, right? Yeah. So where are you from? Late night, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's late night, that's it's late late night talk show, man. man. Like, we got to start classic. stepping up to life on the Dutch Hall's level, man. Like, that's what I mean. Right. Mike did it. That's Rodney Dangerfield. He got a, life, he got a laugh off his lesbian bit earlier. Yeah, eh? exactly. Set that up. Perfect. You know who else? You know who does that? Uh, Shazma did it a couple times at the beginning, where he, he came in like the Tonight Show, and he. Dude, I gotta tell you, it's awesome that you're talking about Shazma because the entire ride from the show to here, we are all just doing Shazma impersonations, oh, yeah. like our own version of it. Because everyone has, you their know, Kevin's own. good buddies with Shazma that's, too. That's or oh yeah, through high school and he went to high school with him. <laughs> Everybody yeah. has their own, and nothing's perfect. But you're like, it's close enough. They're like, oh yeah, that's Shazma. It's great. <laughs> yeah, no way. Yeah, howdy. <laughs> <laughs> so when you went to high school with him, did he look 85 back then too, or like his appearance hasn't changed? His appearance way. hasn't changed for it's chill. He's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's a beautiful boy. I wanted to ask you guys a question because you, um, you're at different levels in com. We're all at different levels of comedy. And uh, do you find now that you've been through it a bit that uh, um, there are like graduate? It's I find it like university kind of. <laughs> like it reminds me of university. Like you step up a class all the time. Like you you hit levels, but it's not like you graduate at the same time. You know, sure. as your peers, but you can see people get into these levels. You know. And you know it's little things like you know first you you start first you like doing open mics 
then you start getting like paid shows or like book shows, sorry, book shows, then paid shows, you know? Well, how long have you been doing it, Pete? I've been in the podcast for over four years and I've been doing the uh, comedy for two and a half, I think. Okay, so you're like just ahead of me in terms of time spent. So I'll be two years March 1st. So like I'm the youngest in yeah. like, ter- like comedy years here with all this shit. Yep. But uh, sometimes, dude, like, what are you talking about the level? Sometimes you could be, there's a guy who have been doing it two years, and they're all of a sudden, like, there's a dude in Calgary I met, he's been doing it three years, and he was headlining, and he's touring, he's, he's like, very funny. Yeah. I've been doing it five, and I was just middling and stuff, you know? So sometimes but it's, it's not even the It's how year. much you put into it, it's how hard you go, and how True. much you, like, shut your fucking mouth and listen when people try to give you advice. True. That's, like, yeah. the biggest thing that drives me nuts, man. But thought, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 I think you're making a good point. I'd like to hear the end of it. Sorry, go ahead. I hate I everyone. No. <laughs> yeah, no. No, what I was going to no. say is you see all these guys that you come up with that, like, you start around the same time, right, for the most part. And there's guys that, like, I, we, like we were talking about it on the, on the ride up where, like, you don't know what it is. But, like, some guys carry, like, an arrogance or, like, just, like, an air about them where they're, like, they think they're the shit. And then you watch them on stage. You're, like, what, what are you doing? Well, like, just because you hit the same mic in the same city yeah. every single week. Yeah, or or you see a guy that started the same time as you getting good, better gigs than you're getting, and then you think you deserve it, but really you don't because you didn't put the work in, or you're not as talented, or you work, you it, know. It's, th- it's that's, so many different things. That's the pitfalls of comedy, I think. But for me, I don't buy in any of that bullshit because uh, for me, I don't, I'm not interested in like comparing myself to anyone else, other than to know that I'm progressing. Like I want to sure, know I'm that's, progressing. That's like the main thing, right? Is that like was I am I stronger than I was? A month ago or like two months ago and stuff like that and sometimes like michael's right that you'll see guys in like different scenes different communities like throughout the country that might be like look like they're advancing faster but i will say southwestern ontario is a very competitive community like it's big there's lots of big comics throughout southwestern ontario where like Certain areas of like Alberta, you probably back me up on this, or like Manitoba and stuff like that. There's probably a bit like just less comics doing it, so you might move forward quicker just because there's not as many people around. Like for example, right, right. like when we first even met, Canada versus states, right? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. But even when we first met, like it was when uh, I did. I opened up for Tom Segura, and you were at the show, yep. and then you asked me to do the podcast for the first time or whatever. Yeah, else, it was right? it your twelfth show? It was like, yeah, <laughs> it was like it was no twenty third. Oh, twenty third. Sorry, Segura. That it was not like a high number at all, and I was doing good for like a comic in London. But if I was in Toronto, I never would have got to open up for Tom Segura with a year experience no, in comedy, no. right? So sometimes that can be a factor too yeah you know for what sure I mean? so you should never really compare yourself to somebody because like they might have been looking for women at the time or they might have been looking for like a person of color at the time or yeah. they might have that person might have just come from a different community so it's never yeah. healthy to like compare if you're getting better gigs than you were a year ago then you're on track dude. Yeah, like yeah. that's all that like really matters yeah. you know what i mean if you have more material than you had before or you look at old jokes that you had, and you're like, those fucking suck. And you can realize that now. Yeah, yeah. Then you know you're getting stronger, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's what really matters. Yeah, I, th- I agree. I think you just have to show that personal growth, and then you keep going. And then for me, it's always been about the work, like the the actual piece. Like, uh, I know Jason's got an album, Wood Chipper. I forgot to plug it, but Jason's got a, a Wood Chipper album out there. If you guys want to get it, just send me. I'll figure out a way to get it to you if you want to give him some money. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but Jay, but Jay's got an album out, and I think that the album is the key. Like that's all I care about is like the album or the special or the something. When I work on these jokes for years, and then I can put it away and have some sort of permanent, like you know, record of that work I put in. But this is the difference between you and most other guys around our level, where if you're you're building towards a goal, yeah. Like okay, so I want to build my five, then my ten, then my fifteen all that stuff, and you want to put it into something coherent, right? A lot of guys, when you watch them, guys, girls, whoever, when they're, when they're newer, they're just trying to throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. They're not writing with like a co- – and there's no right way to do it, I don't think. Write what you think is funny and perform it and, and see how it goes. But if you have an end goal that you're going for in mind, 
yeah, then you can be happy and, with the goal that you can you can actually achieve, and it's within your grasp to get it. Sure. And you know it, what I mean? Like yeah. you don't have to rely on somebody else to tell you they agree with you or anything like that. You can just say, I, I did this, you know, because I did it, you know, and, and then and then no one could take that from you. You know what I mean? Sure. Like no one can take Jay's album from him. He did it. Those jokes he wrote, you're gonna yeah. have them no matter what it's forever. It's done and it's out there and like. And I was telling these guys, too, it was just like I've been traveling around a lot lately now. I got my I've sold my CD in like four different provinces oh, yeah? at this point. Right. And I'm like planning on keep going around and keep moving it. You know what I mean? Are you yeah. Shit yourself. Pete? I have to piss so bad. He's, he's Hold on. Shit. Just talk about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, t- we'll talk to the band. I thought there was some no pee rule and he just broke it. The host. Crowd well, work. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you guys, actually. How many comics were at the show you were just at? Oh, fuck. Because you keep Dude, talking I, about, I like... I got the list. I got the list. All right. Sounds like a friggin' battle of the bands. Yeah. Oh, you do have the list. <laughs> I got the list. I got the list. I forgot. Moses keeps the list or, like, anything that he can get from any show that he does. It's like a set list. Yeah, yeah, so he puts it all together. Yeah, yeah sure. I get Five, it. Six, seven comics, and then Pete owes his. Seven yeah, people so doing how many minutes each? Yeah, uh, it yeah, depends. Five to seven. Some people went longer. I did so there's, ten. So did eight ten? comics. I yeah, did. I did comments. nine. Yeah. How many guys showed up? Like, like audience? People? Yeah. 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 You know what I'm getting at, right? Yeah, it was about one to one. Yeah, it was about one to one. Yeah. I've been at. I've been at gigs like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're Is fun that, like, too, though. Use it. Oh, they agree fully with what you guys are yeah. saying, though. It doesn't matter if there's seven or eight people out there. Yeah. You go up there and you fucking kill it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. You know what? You took. You're taking your Saturday oh, night or whatever, exactly. your Thursday yeah, afternoon or whatever you, drove, you guys were. You doing, drove right? there. You sure. got to the yeah. Yeah, yeah, More yeah. importantly, that guy sh- drove there, yeah, right? Like he showed up. He, that person showed up, and you right. So play for that guy, or exactly. fucking do your thing Dude, for that guy. One of we them always look at it as like a paid jam, right? And you get I don't know. You guys get paid. You get free drinks or something. Sure, sure. You go in there and don't care. Like you see somebody dancing, and you're like, I can't really dance, but that dude. That guy's dancing for me. And I'm not good now. I don't want to care. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Me, you almost kill it harder yeah, oh, because yeah, that guy sure. is paying attention. For sure, you and have to. In you that have room, to. When you get those ten, like, because yeah. you, because like a room full of hundred, you could only get sixty laughs. Sure. Still feels good, but in a room full of ten, yeah. And if you get ten you out of ten get, in the room, like you have that. to get nine out of ten for it to feel yeah. like you did. Yeah. So, that dude, joke. we, me and Jason were just in Brampton a couple of weeks ago at Crickets for like when Crickets was Crickets for all of two weeks. In Brampton, that was that's a whole fucking. Thing. I love that it's I'll called it crickets. In a yeah. yeah, but uh, the one show that we did had I don't know like eight people, and this is like a, this is like their big weekend. They're like trying to get a bunch of people out, and there's nobody there, and it was so fun. They were they were, everyone that was there was like, yeah, I'm here for comedy. Like I like make me laugh. Like I'm into it, and it was awesome. I've been on shows where like you watch crowds with 40, 50 people. And they're just like sitting back, like okay, make me laugh. Like they're they're not really super into it. Yeah. But these people were really into it. That whole cricket thing's fucked, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> touch on that a little. Yeah. I'll I'll just say for just like one more thing on this like topic too though is like when you're progressing in comedy and you want to like, and you're like getting to a point where you're like I'm gonna do this for a living. This is how I'm gonna pay my bills or like do whatever I have to. The the fact that there's like some shitty shows it like it's gonna make you harder because like eventually you're gonna get to the point where you're doing nooners at colleges where you're fucking interrupting students lunch breaks and they won't get off their laptops and they're paying you to be there so you're bringing the energy and you're doing the show i did a fucking nooner with eric johnston at seneca college on wednesday oh really and we ate shit because they just they don't care they don't they're looking at their laptops. They were lured in with, like, free pizza. And you do your job. You don't bail early. You power through the set, and you do what you have to do, right? Like, I was headlining tonight. I was getting paid. I did my time. I gave them as much energy as I could, and I don't regret anything about it. You know what I mean? So you're going to get those yeah. shit shows. But even then, if you can bring some energy, you might actually get something out of it. And you really know when bits work if it's a super small crowd. And they're still laughing. Yeah, that's that's it's a, that's always it. It's easy to make <clears throat> it sound like you're killing in a room with a hundred people. Right, right. You could be getting a failing grade and still sound like you're killing. You could get forty percent of the audience to laugh, but if there's four hundred people in yeah. the room, 
that's still a lot of people laughing, right? So you look great, but really you're failing. Yeah. But when you can do it in a room of ten and you're getting like Michael said, like eight or nine laughing, you're fucking you're on to something. Yeah, exactly. Those are solid bits. But you, you can't get much information on the other side. You can't tell which which joke is bad, you know, because you don't have enough information that way. Sure. But so you I know which ones saying. are good. But you know what ones are like really good. Yeah, yeah. When you're getting those pops and stuff, even yeah. in small audience. Because even like some of those jokes that sucked on a light night might work with a different crowd, but they're not foolproof well, like those ones that worked that's tonight. That's right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just figuring out. And again, that's just like constant writing. And before you know it, you have a bunch that are like, they're foolproof and they're just going to go over yeah. anywhere. And that's, that's how you get like great headlining comics. Any great headliner, even that if they're the just class. doing a 45 minute set, they have three hours of material. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, yeah, no problem at all. Yeah. Like, I, like, uh, I know that a lot of people say they'll have like 20, but they really have eight or whatever, oh, yeah. you know? You get a bunch of that yeah. shit. And then, uh, but, but yeah, like, if I look through all my jokes, like, since the beginning, like, Got lots, but I, but, yeah. I, but then you get to that point where you yeah. look at those jokes and you're like, yeah, hell I'm no, like, I'm not going back to and those. Then you, and then you, that's it. Yeah. yeah, you start and you're like, I got thirty, and then you look at them and you're like, no, I got ten. <laughs> yeah, I just got better. Now all those other jokes are shit. Yeah, you know? when you can admit to that, <laughs> that's when you're like, good. I was talking to a comic not that long ago, Kyle Lucy, who I think is like a funny dude. He's from Toronto, and he was saying he's like sometimes a great set or a great weekend is when I throw out two jokes where I'm like, I'm not keeping these in anymore. They're yeah. actually slowing down the set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like, you know what I mean? So they, used to be your, like, they used to be what you open with yeah. or something, and now they're just like, they're dragging it down. You have to ditch them. As much as like it's important to build time and everybody wants like an album eventually and stuff like that, it is good to like shed some of that like excess shit that yeah, yeah. you don't really need in your your material too right? yeah so even with this podcast too like at the beginning when i did this podcast because i didn't know what i was doing i was a banker and then i tried to do something like this it's quite a departure from what i was used to so i didn't know if i could do it so i didn't really want people to see it or hear it you know the, yeah the early stages yeah. yeah yeah so i was just hoping uh, like uh, at the beginning no not too many people would figure it, that we were doing this and then i could actually start to build a skill right. set you sure. know and then hopefully, you know. I always think it's crazy when comics will like put up their first set on YouTube. And oh stuff my god! Like that too. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. right away. I'm like, don't, yeah, don't reveal that yeah, to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's you like see them doing their first set and they got their friend or their girlfriend. It's like filming the, body. Body. With their <laughs> the nicest phone. camera. Yeah. Yeah. Like they spent more time saving up for the camera than yeah. they did on the jokes. Yeah. 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 And now it's fucking time to shine. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's yeah. just. Like, it's like putting your first time the, having sex. Get the sex. Yucks logo in the <laughs> face because yeah. and and to, and then cut away from at first, you know, and then at the end, I'm just gonna stand there for a second, like, a, and then just take a photo and I'm yeah, I had a I, profile pic. My first time I did yucks, I put the picture up too, and then <laughs> oh, I yeah, did, yeah, yeah. and then I realized uh, how it. Um, Hack it is, <laughs> you know. Comedian Van Dyke on his yeah, 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 wow, yeah. He's yeah. signed to Yuck Yucks already. That's yeah, exactly. Crazy. I'm the, I'm yeah. already at there, yeah. you know. I, that is, I fell into that trip, but I was so excited oh, yeah, when yeah, I played yeah, Yucks yeah. the first time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was super pumped up when they do the introduction that's recorded. Yeah, yeah, at yeah, the yeah. beginning. Ballroom Blitz. Yeah, yeah the Ballroom that's Blitz. Where you can go and actually watch like some. You know? It's a it's so a legit some, comedy. Some people put it, yeah. Yeah, because when I was, that's where you go, and, and when you're like uh, my weird. whole life watching it as a fan, you it's know. Weird having new comics come up, like I'm too nervous to email you. So just do it, like just, it's just, fucking Pat yeah. Cabellino. <laughs> I'm like, like send him an email. Like, yeah, but then you'll have like, other how do you people watch that show. Like even Chris Jarvis, like. Oh, I like watch Yuck Sandwich your neck. And I was like, oh, I'll do it. Like I'm just like, yeah, that's exactly what it should yeah, be like for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's not because, uh, and then there's the opposite though, where people will only do Yucks Amateur Night. Yeah, that's and, don't and do they've never else. done another show, mm -hmm. and they'll only do that, and then and you know they're not, no. you can't develop that way either, no. you know. No, but they're they're not trying to develop at that point. If they're trying, they're doing it as a hobby. Yeah, yeah. yeah, is that like the open mic night? Yeah. Of, yeah. Um, well, yeah. yeah, it's still booked. It's a book oh. show, but but it's uh, it is like the where the amateurs can go up. The it's like it's like booked. As far as, like, he can only put on so many people 
but you don't need credentials to get on the show. You mm. know what I mean? Like yeah. you, c- anybody could email him. He doesn't need to like look into you or see a video or anything like that. It's not like doing weekends at clubs and and touring around and shit like that. They want to give uh, new comics a chance, so it's one of their ways to pr- promote the new talent. And it is. It's imp- and it's important. You know, yeah. if it yeah. wasn't for like amateur contests and mic nights and shit like that, I never would have got. It. You know, better like nobody would get better. You oh, know what I mean? Like you all get, start you know, you get somewhere, that. Yeah, right? Won that and people, you know, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Notice you. Yeah, I did the yucks. I was in the yucks final in January, the one Doug won. Yeah, and uh, just it was great being in that, uh, having the pressure to be in that sure yeah. final. Yeah. You know? And then like a packed room too, and yeah. you, you're figuring it out up there, and like yeah, and I totally made every mistake I could have made, oh, yeah. and I'll never do it again. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, never yeah. make those mistakes again. You know, you, like or you, or you learn from it, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh man, did I ever analyze that thing? Oh, for sure. I overthought it completely. I was like so overthought it that I, it was like when you're trying to golf, mm. and you know, and everyone tells you, "Hey, Pete, you're slicing because your elbows bent or yeah. your fucking your yeah. knees are too far apart or something like." And you're thinking of all they're all showing out information at you, and then you end up fucking not even hitting the ball at all because you whiff on it because yeah. you're thinking about too many things. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that's what like, it was. That's another good sign of a comic that's at least going to get good. Is like when somebody like everybody bonds. It happens right. to everybody, but when Guys bomb, and then you see them off stage, and they look stressed out, and they're standing by themselves, and they're thinking about everything. I'm like, those guys are going to get good because they're reevaluating everything. They're questioning themselves. They're going to challenge themselves, mm-hmm. and they're going to get stronger. When guys bomb, and then they walk off stage, and they're like, well, what's everybody doing after the show? And uh, it's just like, do do ain't no yeah. thing. I'm like, you're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. not questioning yeah. why you failed in front of 100 people. Yeah. Something's wrong. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're not taking this seriously enough. Mm. Yeah. Isn't it so weird, though, that you can see exactly from a mile away who – we were talking about this earlier tonight. You know who's trying and who's, like, actually trying to make a go of it. And who's not? You can always tell. You can see it. Just everything. The way they carry themselves, the way they like act on stage, the way they act off stage, everything about it. You're like, okay, you're into it. You're, this is what you're trying to do. You're right. even, even if you don't ever make a career of it, you're still trying to get better and like you want to get to that next level and you're going to keep trying and keep you know doing new things. Right. You, can, you can smell it, man. Just the same way you can smell someone that's new and you're like, oh, this is, this is brand new to you. Like This is a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what else I like about comedy? It's a great equalizer. Like if you're if you're of an age difference, it's gone. Like it starts from comedy day one. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then oh, uh, yeah. if yeah. there's a like a, a a social economic difference, it's gone day one as soon as you do comedy because you're on a, the scale yeah, of yeah. comics. You know, doesn't matter like at all. it doesn't yeah, matter yeah, if yeah. You, yeah, it, you, you anything that you think you yeah. got going for you beforehand or whatever. It doesn't matter. Day one, you're just like a baby that just was born, yeah, and yeah, you're, you're yeah, the same yeah. as everyone yeah, else. Yeah. Yeah, I Probably like it. Because you're hanging out with everybody you would never hang out with. Oh, I'm looking up to people that are yeah. like, uh, you know, 15 years my junior, and yeah. uh, yeah. they're like my, they're like people I, ad- yeah. I uh, admire and 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 try to learn from, you know. Yeah. So yeah. it's cool, you know. It's a, it's just the, it is about the time and effort you put in your, your craft and all that stuff. And I don't know if people appreciate that when they go to one of those shows and watch what we do. You know what no, though? They don't know. They don't. They don't appreciate it. But also, like to say that it's about the time and effort that you put into it, you can say that because you you're older. You got a perspective on life. You get it. Yeah. There's you see young guys that are just like they start and they want shit immediately. Yeah. They're like, well, I don't get it. I've done ten open mics. I should be I should be doing weekends. <laughs> yeah. Or like, why didn't I get that guest spot? It's like because you're not putting time and effort into it. You know, like how long did it take you to be like your banker? Right. Yeah, yeah. You, ten years. Ten years to two get to, like, to get good at it. Before I won the, the two-time Presidents Club awards, <laughs> those two Presidents Club awards oh, up there. there. You go. Oh yeah, those are the. I won them uh, two years in a row. But that's the thing. You put time and effort in. If you didn't put time and effort in, you don't. You don't get to have this lovely garage here, Peter. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I was actually trying to prove a point <laughs> yeah. to my boss, who was a real fucking prick. That I was, because uh, he thought I was shit, and then I, tr- I tried to prove a point one year. And then I won the trip, and then uh, the next because I was lazy the other ten years, and then uh, and then uh, the and then the and I had friends of mine right out of university that were good at banking like right away. They were like awesome. They were winning those trips like right off the bat, 
and I just never got it because I, I didn't. I was too young. I just didn't get the fact that you had to, you had to like uh, own shit. You know, you couldn't like wait for shit to happen. You had to make it happen. You know, like as soon as that clicked in my head, it was a different story. And then I started to do well. And then I realized it didn't just apply to. Everything. bullshit like everything. banking you could do it to anything you want in life and then i said well why don't i apply that same th- shit to bullshit like banking not bullshit like comedy yeah exactly <laughs> dick jokes are way more valuable to me than banker than banking any day just put it under your mattress what the fucking difference does it make you know to me <laughs> those guys are crooks man and i don't like them i don't like that I was ever affiliated with any of them so uh i uh I have burnt all my banking bridges. We were going to do a show where we ceremoniously burnt a bridge like that we made. <laughs> yes, let's do it. Yeah, so like I never pops, had... A like a popsicle bridge? Oh, yeah, like uh, my kids yeah. made one for yeah. school. I was like, yeah. I'm going to save that thing and burn it <laughs> so that I can and make it like I'm burning all the bridges with all the banks so I uh-huh. never have to go back. Because I do wake up thinking I have to go back. Anyways, uh, I just wanted to thank you guys. We're, wa- we're over time now. And uh, but I want to thank you guys because I love talking comedy and I and uh, I I love learning from you three guys. Uh, so I appreciate you guys coming in and making the time for us. Uh, anything you want to plug before we go? You got any dates? Yeah. Um, I'm in St. John, New Brunswick at Chuckles Comedy Club. Be there. February 23rd and 24th. Come check me out uh, out east. Wow. That's awesome. Yes, to the New Brunswick people. And uh, any other anyone else? I'm in uh, Ottawa at the Yuck Yucks from February 8th to the 11th. And uh, add me as a friend on Facebook at Michael Moses. Just Michael Moses. Just search me up. And Be I'm there. Just sir. Yeah. I'm and sure all these guys will say the same thing. Oh, that was up. really smart. Yeah. I got nothing to plug. I mean, I have shows coming up, but I'm not going to New Brunswick. I'm not a Yucks guy. Be you should have went first. Be there. I know. I really should have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got me on Instagram. Be there. Yeah. I got something, Pete. So oh, I'm sorry, guys. Yes. Brad and I will be on uh, live at the Dutch Hall <laughs> <laughs> on yeah. February 22nd. Be uh, there. Be ne- there. Never heard of it. Uh, and you will be representing which uh, rendition of the it Paul is, H. Uh, this is the Hippos. This is the Hippos. Hippo Z. Yes. Hippo Z will be in. You, we've already we've had Paul in as a uh, Huck Jen, yeah. as Zeffler, and now Hippos. this is Hippos. Hippos. We got yeah. we got a few more. We're gonna be here for therapist, friendship don't, on a stick, and worry, the whatever we got, device. <laughs> we got a bunch. You don't mind? <laughs> yes, I, well, I want to run through all these bands. I just need to know exactly how many I'm going through. But, cool. if, but yeah, the twenty seconds a big day. I'm really excited. <laughs> Any other gigs locally? Oh no. no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, uh, Zeffler is uh, on the 9th of February. Zeffler is at. Uh, we're What's doing, that we're fucking doing, place? Uh, Swazis. Swazis. Oh, yeah. It's a memorial then, for our buddy who uh, uh, passed away recently. Oh, okay. Hmm. And it's going to not be like such no, a I subdued event. Um, here's Dude. We'll be up here. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know? Uh, and then uh, what's the other one? The 24th. Yeah. Zeffler is at, uh, what's that? Kill Yard. Kill Yard. Yeah, yeah. Kill Yard. Kill. It's Killyard, right? Kill it's Killyard if you're from Dalhive. When you're from Dalhive, it's, it's Killyard. Yeah. When you're from everywhere else, you're wrong. Right. <laughs> Just like Crick and Creek. Yeah. It's a Crick. crick. Yeah, it's Big Crick. Yeah. Big Crick. Dawson's Crick. <laughs> That's all Crick. Crick-related shows. Yeah. And uh, on March 17th, we'll be at uh, Jeff's uh, Buck and Doe. Oh. Fucking Krentz, man. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Okay, stop bragging. <laughs> yeah. You guys, you guys have made it. We get it. <laughs> We're big time. We're big time. Yeah. Crowd um, control. Yeah. Well, anyways. I almost uh, forgot. I almost forgot. Mike oh. Mitchell and I, Mike does have something to announce. Mike Mitchell and I are at Showtime Comedy in St. Catharines uh, Comedy Club next uh, next weekend, February 9th and 10th. So Be that, there. There you go. Be Mike there. Mitchell at Showtime. That's a good show. Way to go, Mike. And uh, and I, you can see, I don't even care. Don't come see me. I'm going to say that right now. Like the electrician? Oh, yeah, I'm like the I'm electrician. I don't know why I'm so grumpy this episode. I think it was the two shows. It, it, did they seem more grumpy than normal, Steve? Uh, no. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying something. I just want to thank everyone for listening. I want to thank the Nocturnal Emissions for the, who came Woo. in today. Woo. They did a great job. Thank you very much for bailing me out because uh, I can't count on any of my, mount, my, <laughs> men, my men. But until the next week, we will see you NT. See you next Thursday.
everybody. Thank you very much. Yay, everybody. Perfect.